First, they looked at the patina, a thin surface layer that forms over time on the outside of a rock or stone. As we see in this sample, we have a very thin brown layer that about one millimeter thick that covers the sample. The formation of a patina is caused by the interaction of chemicals in air, water, or soil with minerals in the stone itself. In this one, we see a very edgy brown, and we can see that it may be thicker or thinner, but it covers all around, it goes all around the sample. A patina develops slowly and may take thousands of years to form. The geologist studying the stone found that the patina was continuous across the front of the stone and, crucially, within the inscribed letters. They concluded the inscription must have been carved in the distant past. Next, the geologists analyzed the chemical makeup of the patina. They were looking for calcium carbonate and other chemicals, which would tell them if it had formed in the Jerusalem area. They found that the trace elements like uh, strontium, iron, magnesium, and other elements that are in the calcium carbonate, uh, they, they had exactly the same proportions as in the patina in the uh, Jerusalem area. The patina tests indicated that the stone came from Jerusalem and that the inscription really was very old. The big question now was, how old? Although it was impossible to date the stone itself, remarkably, within the patina, there were minute particles of charcoal and these could be carbon dated. The results were conclusive. They were 2,300 years old. So the carving beneath the patina had to be even older. There seemed to be no doubt that the stone came from the Jerusalem area, and the inscription was thousands of years old. And there was one last discovery that reinforced the conclusion that it came from the Temple of Solomon. The patina contained tiny flecks of gold. Just what one might expect from a stone that had been through a fire in a temple lined with gold. <laughs>